feelings towards you are so complicated. It just seems so soulless and pointless compared to every other game in the series. And maybe that's what we're talking about in another video. Well, I don't have anything better to do. Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U, also known as Smash 4, yeah, you heard me, Oliver, is a part of the Smash Brothers series that, once more, I have a complicated relationship with. It's a game, or pair of games, that I've previously called Hollow, Soulless, and A Mess. All of that in spite of how much I adored it when it was released, and just how important it was to me at the time. And you know what? Enough beating around the bush. Let's talk about why I'm now tempted to call Super Smash Bros. 4 the worst entry in the series. <laughs> nice sentiment. But first, whether Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U are the same game or completely different games has always been... hazy. They have the same exact roster and generally the same exact gameplay, but each has a different list of stages and modes. Fans call both of them Smash 4, but the director Masahiro Sakurai considers them to be the fourth and fifth Smash games. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to consider these two things different versions of the same game and collectively refer to them as Smash 4. Oliver. Despite how negative this video will soon get, I'm gonna start with the part of Smash 4 I still hold near and dear to my heart. The characters. We may have lost some old favorites in the transition from Brawl. Snake, Lucas, and Wolf were left behind, as were the Ice Climbers due to the 3DS's hardware limitations, and Pokemon Trainer was ditched along with Squirtle and Ivysaur to leave Charizard all by his lonesome. But putting all that aside, Smash 4's suite of newcomers is so good. Quite possibly the overall strongest lineup of new additions to any single game in the series, at the very least competing with Ultimate. I know this is where the pushback against the likes of anime sword fighters and Fire Emblem characters started up, but quite frankly, I think that whole outrage is pretty stupid, and maybe that's a discussion for another day. Regardless, so many Dream Fighters joined the battle here. Mega Man, Little Mac, Pac-Man, and later Ryu, Cloud, and Bayonetta, just to name a few. Hell, personally speaking, Bowser Jr. and Duck Hunt were characters that had been on my wish list for a long time. Yep, I was one of those kids. And nearly all of the newcomers, from the highly requested icons to the niche oddballs, are so intricately designed for Smash. Across the board, there's so many unique play styles, character specific mechanics, and interesting quirks that generally allow these fighters to faithfully represent their canonical counterparts while also introducing fresh concepts to Smash Brothers. It's pretty telling that this entry's release was when fans really started pointing out how outdated some of the older fighters felt, or in other words, how much the design of the average Smash Brothers character had evolved in just about every way. And I think what really made this side of Smash 4 so special to me was the build-up to release. Now, up to this point, I had grown up with every Smash Brothers game in one form or another. Aside from cheap edutainment games, the original Super Smash Brothers for the Nintendo 64 was the first video game I ever played. Shortly after, I got a GameCube and played Melee to death, and then later I played Brawl a ton too. But having been born in 2000, the year of the beast, I was I wasn't really privy to the hype cycle for any of these games. I mean, Melee was revealed at E3 2001. Wow, they added the Ice Climbers? And while Brawl had the fondly remembered Smash Brothers Dojo for announcements leading up to release, I only became smart to that scene around the time of Sonic's reveal. But with Smash 4? Oh, I was on that hype train from E3 2013 all the way up to the 2014 release. So that whole experience, being excited and surprised by each new trailer and showcase, speculating who and what would come to the game next, and just becoming more aware of and involved with the community, it was priceless. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If not for all of that, I probably wouldn't be so invested in the internet culture surrounding video games, much less running this YouTube channel. So for that, Thank you, Super Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U. Now on to why I actually 
fucking hate this thing. Contrary to popular belief, there's more to Smash Brothers than its roster. You may forget that sometimes, what with how all the speculation and discussion revolves around which characters have joined and will join the battle. But fighters are, by default, the most important part of the game. But they're not the only important part of the game. In my opinion, the real unsung hero of Smash, and in fact all of Sakurai's games, is the wide array of things to do. These games always give you a ton of content outside of the abundance of playable characters. Fun and unique places to go, prizes to work towards, modes that almost feel like their own games within the game. On top of all that, each Smash game has their own take on all of those, meaning there's a reason to remember and revisit each and every entry, no matter how much time passes. See, that's how Smash 4 actually mixes up the series formula. It doesn't have any of that. I'd like to break down Smash 4's biggest weaknesses into a few major categories. We have a lot of ground to cover. Lucky me. So, let's start with the least offensive of the bunch, the stages. I am still offended though. Yeah, this is kinda lame. I mentioned this before, but the 3DS and Wii U versions of the game have different stage lists. They share a few stages, but overall you're getting a different selection for each. And man, I'm just not really into a lot of the brand new stages. Don't get me wrong, most of them look really good. I mean, the whole game does. There was nowhere to go but up after. <laughs> But so many stages are just too gimmicky for their own good, have bizarre layouts that don't feel great to fight on, or, of course, they're plagued by overly intrusive stage hazards. Sure, the previous game stages had their fair share of wacky obstacles, but with Smash 4, they doubled down on Brawl's worst tendencies, and it's consistently way too much. Elements like Wrecking Crew's destructible layers, Wily Castle's Yellow Devil, and Pac-Land's everything absolutely ruin those stages because they cause you to struggle more against the environment than the other fighters. I guess that can be enjoyable in its own way, but not like this. These don't add fun chaos to the wackier side of Smash. They just give casual players who normally like that sort of thing a headache, and the more competitive players less options. This garbage is why Ultimate has an extra toggle in its rule sets. Good for it. And do you know what's just as bad as annoying stage hazards? Mega stages. Oh my god, the mega stages. This is another bad trend carried on from Brawl. That game tried to recapture the magic of Melee's temple. <laughs> Tries a strong word, isn't it? Stages that put sheer scale before level design and thus have often been considered to be some of the worst stages in the series. And we get even more of that here, yay! It does make more sense this time because Smash 4 introduced 8 player Smash, so there is a legitimate reason for them to have been chasing this sort of design. That doesn't mean they did a good job. Okay, big battlefield, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's battlefield, but with a bigger base and more platforms to accommodate. It gets the job done, and that's the most you can say about it. Palutena's Temple and Garaplane have New Pork City Syndrome. By that, I mean their solution to their own scale was to toss platforms and walls around with little rhyme or reason, like baby's first Mario Maker level. They're not the absolute bottom of the barrel, but I never find myself actually wanting to play on them over any other stage, even for 8-player battles. You know what is the bottom of the barrel? The Great Cave Offensive. <laughs> hey, you want a stage with random claustrophobic platform layouts? So big that during a typical battle you can't see sh and horrifically enclosed to the point that they had to add these random lava pools that insta-kill you at 100%, defeating the actual purpose of percentages and knockback in a platform fighter? Then this stage is for you. I don't think it's for me. Even for the stages I don't hate, uh, several of them are a bit too derivative of previous stages. Town and City? It is very similar to Smashville. They do have different layouts, but the basic idea and aesthetic is nearly identical. Mario Circuit? Again? Windy Hill Zone? Well, I'm not gonna say rehashing Green Hill isn't faithful. Flat Zone X isn't a new- And then there's the returning stages. You know, seeing all these haphazardly clog up the stage selection instead of being on their own page or organized chronologically is another reason why Smash 4's stage list is just so 
bleh to me. Oh, and also, these stages are really showing their age. When they upgraded the visual of these familiar levels in Ultimate, it was a very welcome change because, oh man, do they really look like old stages here. And they can often clash with the higher fidelity and more vibrant character models of this game. Even the ones from Brawl, just one game, one console generation back. They look dated. Not to mention, some of the ones they picked to come back? Oh boy, 75 meters. And all of these problems are exacerbated by the fact that the stages are divided between the two versions of the game. If they shared their entire stage list, or if at the very least all of the 3DS stages were also in the Wii U version, that obviously wouldn't make all of these issues magically vanish, but it would give players more options when it comes to the actually good stages and sheer variety. But because the stages are divvied up between the two platforms, neither really feels complete. And unfortunately, that's a good segue into Smash 4's collectibles. Across the Smash series, these various trinkets provide an incentive to play and master different modes, show more love towards a multitude of games, including those not otherwise represented, and even sometimes change up the gameplay in a multitude of ways. So, how does Smash 4 fare in this regard? Uh... First off, there are the tried and true trophies. This is one of the signature elements of Smash Brothers. Sure, they're not in the most recent entry, but they make for such recognizable iconography and turn Smash into a sort of video game museum. They peaked in Melee. I'm not sure how popular that opinion is, but yeah, they were introduced in Melee, and in my opinion, they got a little less cool in each subsequent game. I don't know, I think it's just that in their original incarnation, they tended to use more fully custom models, and when they did port stuff, they still did cool things with it, like using models that were only ever used in promotional art, polishing up low-poly N64 assets, or teasing future games. On top of all that, the sheen on these trophies make them actually look like figurines, as opposed to just game models plopped on a plate. With Brawl, on top of that game's own art style being there are a lot more trophies that just directly ported character models from the most recent games, and for the most part, they didn't do anything particularly interesting with them, not even bothering to make them look the part. And then with Smash 4, things are even lamer! Problem number one, just like the stages, trophies are split between the two platforms. The 3DS version focuses more on Nintendo's handheld history, while the Wii U version of course hones in on their home console lineage. That sounds like a neat idea, but in practice, similar to the stage list, it makes each game's catalog of trophies appear unfinished. And it's a short-sighted idea anyway, because not all of these series have a massive presence on both consoles and handhelds. Wii Fit doesn't have 3DS exclusive trophies. Who could have expected that? Point is, this approach makes the trophy gallery less effective as a museum, because I'm only getting half the story at best. But the much bigger problem is, as I said, the trophies that are in either game are underwhelming in their own right. Not only do we have even more plain old boring model ports that don't look like figurines, but now we're dealing with an infestation. 2D trophies. Yep, these ones just suck. I thought a big part of the appeal with trophies was that you could rotate, zoom in on these models. If they're just sprites, why even bother? And you know what I really hate about them? If these trophies were in Melee, they'd be given brand new models. That game took retro throwbacks that had only ever been 2D sprites and reimagined them in 3D. And that was cool because it gave an idea of what those characters would look like in Smash or a modern reboot or something. There were some 2D trophies, but those select few felt like special stylistic decisions. These just feel lazy. We already have these 2D sprites in the game. Slap them on a circle. They're jarring compared to the 3D trophies, and they're not even consistent with each other. You can spin some of them around, but others always track the camera, and then a few of them actually have depth. Now, the latter still isn't as cool as Melee's approach, but it's something. Why not update the other flat trophies to match, since that would at least look better than... So yeah. Smash 4 is the reason I wasn't heartbroken about trophies being gone in the next game. That's a good start. What about the other collectibles? Ah! Nope, not doing that yet. Uh, this menu sucks, right? 
Yeah, I know. Declaring that Smash 4 has bad menus is like saying water is wet at this point. But it's true. Not only does it reuse nearly all of its sound effects and general design cues from Brawl, making for a less distinct and more forgettable aesthetic, but the buttons are all these giant, ugly, randomly colored stickers that are all different shapes for no reason. And they're arranged sort of diagonally, so it can be unclear which direction to flick the control stick in to get to the option you want. Worst of all, the organization is absolutely abysmal. Guys, I played this game so much during its lifespan, and I still get lost on my way to the f training mode. And come on, games and more? What is the more here? <sighs> Okay, let's talk about that now. A feature that was supposed to be a huge selling point for Smash 4 is the ability to customize fighters. Yes, there were outright custom characters in the form of the Mii Fighters. Somehow Palpatine returned. But players were given similar options with the rest of the roster through the addition of equipment and custom moves. To start with the simpler and frankly less interesting one, pieces of equipment can be given to fighters to buff either their attack, defense, or speed at the expense of nerfing a different stat. Often with a secondary effect in tow. Yeah, as you can tell, you can get some pretty wacky results from this. Equipment is pretty clearly not meant for anything resembling serious play, just single player modes and zanier multiplayer experiences, kind of like Spirits in Ultimate. Though, way less fun because instead of some beloved character or iconography, it's an orange sword. And that's worth mentioning because any given piece of equipment is so expendable. You get rewarded so much of it constantly, seemingly at random, and all pieces use the same handful of icons and even names. It's to the point that the act of collecting these things just becomes meaningless. The far more compelling customization option comes in the form of custom moves. That's right, for the first and only time in a Smash Bros. game, you can swap out a character's special moves to create your very own version of their moveset. Or at least, that's what it would be like in a perfect world. We don't live in a perfect world. Some custom moves are really cool. Palutena is sort of like the Miis in that she was designed around the feature, so she gets a lot of cool, distinct options for her moveset. A couple other characters get really in-depth changes, several of which represent even more of their source material. And a few of the simpler ones that might just change in a text trajectory or something can still lend themselves to new and compelling playstyles. But way, way too many of these things are just uninspired and samey. Oh look, the projectile is bigger and stronger but moves slower. Oh look, the up special goes higher but doesn't have a hitbox. Hey, do you want a win box? Even a lot of the unique ones are lame. Why would you ever use that? Look, I don't care if custom moves are unbalanced, honestly. As much as I like competitive Smash Brothers, I am perfectly fine with features not being made for it. The more chaotic side of Smash is just as important to me. The problem isn't that they're not balanced, the problem is that most of them aren't interesting. They effectively tripled the number of special moves. The move slot typically reserved for a fighter's most mechanically interesting and canonically faithful tools lest we forget. And for the most part, instead of cramming any even more references or giving fighters cool new toys to work with, Mario has big fireballs now! Oh, and they were barely allowed online, and like equipment, most custom move drops are random, and you can get duplicates. So have fun collecting them all, you know, for the right to use BIG FIREBALL! Sometimes. Whether we're talking about trophies, equipment, or custom moves, the operative word is underwhelming. In Smash Brothers, these sorts of rewards are supposed to be a big incentive to play through various modes and complete the game's challenges, and this is the best you've got? But hey, in fairness, the rewards don't have to be anything mind-blowing. After all, if the game's modes are fun and interesting enough on their own, then... Yeah, I'll play them just for the sake of playing them. You don't have to pay me. Sadly, that brings us to what is, in my opinion, Smash 4's greatest shortcoming. It's... Modes. See, if I had to explain my biggest issue with this game in a sentence, I'd say there's a stark lack of things to do. Now, you might be thinking, that's ridiculous, there's plenty to do in this game. Just look at the menus, there's so many options, various game modes to explore even if you're alone. 
First of all, how dare you make me look at this godforsaken menu again? More importantly, yes, there seem to be a lot of options. There's a plethora of buttons to press, but are they really distinct or compelling? I've come to call this aspect of Smash 4 the illusion of content. The 3DS and Wii U versions of the game have a handful of exclusive modes, though I'll start with the shared modes. To begin with the simplest of those, the Stadium section. Only one of the three options here is entirely new, Target Blast. This mode is meant to be a replacement for Target Smash slash Target Test slash Break the Target slash Smack the Red Circle, stupid. That is kind of a bummer since, in 64 Melee, that minigame was an excellent test. <laughs> for each character's attacks and movement options. But keep in mind that in Brawl, no doubt due to the growing size of the roster, character-specific target smash stages were replaced by three generic and uninteresting levels. So at that point, oh, we're not missing out on that much. This is still a weird way to fill that void though. Target Blast, where you're aiming to knock a bomb towards the right spot in order to shatter as many targets as possible. Aside from this being a super shallow experience with not nearly as much replay value, challenge, or even fun as other minigames in the series, the only thing Target Blast has in common with Target Smash is, well, the targets. If anything, this more closely resembles Home Run Contest. Oh, uh, Home Run Contest is the same as always, woo. And for the most part, I can say the same about Multi-Man Smash, which as always, is the lamest of the stadium modes. The new enemies here are the Fighting Me Team and... Sigh. I will say that having Miis as the Horde in this mode makes sense for the whole Nintendo crossover thing, but... Man, the original creatures of the previous games were way cooler. That being said, uh, yeah. Pretty much the same as always. Moving out of the stadium, all-star mode seems like much of the same. A gauntlet where you must fight through the entire roster with limited heals between battles. And now the characters appear in chronological order, which is a nice touch. But, oh, they made it too easy. So apparently in this game, the player deals way more and takes way less damage, meaning they are significantly stronger than the CPUs. You know, I hate to be that guy who's like, games were way harder back in the day, and now everything's dumbed down. But in the case of All-Star Mode, this kind of kills the experience. The damage modifier was definitely implemented because you're fighting more opponents at once. Even so, it doesn't feel right. The whole point of All-Star Mode is that it's the ultimate endurance test. Here, I can just spam up smash for most of the battle and get away with it. It doesn't feel like I'm scratching and clawing my way through gaming's greatest icons. It feels like I'm shoving around a bunch of kids on the playground. That was not the region. Well, in terms of common modes between the 3DS and Wii U, that just leaves good old classic mode. Classic mode has never been the most awe-inspiring thing, but it's a reliable fixture of the Smash games. It's your traditional fighting game arcade mode. Battle through a semi-randomized series of fighters on their home stages, play a minigame or two, and face off against a final boss. And hey, the 3DS version keeps it pretty familiar with a few interesting twists. Namely, there are branching paths so you can pick your battles to get different rewards. A new phase of the final battle too, the Master Core. Not the best boss fight in the Smash Brothers series by any means, but a nice change of pace nonetheless. Well, with the Wii U's extra horsepower, I wonder how it built upon this solid take on classic- I should stop pretending to be happy. Smash for Wii U turned classic mode into a mess. Impressive. So you're on this board and you have all these options for which battle to go into, but each of those battles are entirely randomized. You're not taking on fighters on their home stage. You're battling whoever the game decided to puke out on whatever stage it decided to puke out. Plus, since a lot of these are five to eight player battles, there's a good chance many of those CPUs will just get knocked out without you even touching them. Uh, there's also this rival mechanic where one character is your rival and if you leave them be, they get stronger and it's pretty much just another CPU that is exactly like all the others. Yeah, this is the worst version of classic mode. It feels like they really want to emphasize the new eight player battles, but they did so by having these overly randomized fights with zero theming or cohesion. They just become forgettable noise and make the whole mode feel less special. Like
like, I can get this exact experience by... For a similar story, look at Special Orders, a single player mode exclusive to Smash for Wii U. It's actually two different modes. Master Orders is pretty straightforward. Pick a challenge from the list, win to earn a reward. Crazy Orders has a bit more of a risk reward gambling twist to it, where you can keep taking on challenges for more and more rewards before cashing out with a final battle. I get the impression this was meant to be a long lasting solo draw. It's essentially a rotating towers mode after all. But like I said, it's got the same problem as classic mode where the matches feel too too randomized and homogenized. There's essentially no theming to any of the battles, and when they do have unique conditions, they're just the basic settings you can apply in Special Smash, and it's still pure RNG. Once more, it comes back to the issue that these modes don't really offer anything that the standard multiplayer doesn't. On the flip side, event matches. Yeah, this is more like it. I mean, the whole point of this mode has always been to put the player in unique, heavily themed scenarios. And since that still holds true here, it has what the other modes are largely missing. Words can't describe how much I miss the trophy tussle events from Melee, but this is still by far the best single player content in Smash 4. Which is kind of an issue because it only has so much content, it really isn't anything we haven't seen before in the series, and its previous iterations were accompanied by other options that were unique to those entries. Do you understand what I mean by the illusion of content now? Most of these modes blend together because they insist on large, randomized, and uninteresting battles. It all feels like the same thing, and that one thing is NOT EVEN SPECIAL! Smash's dedicated single player modes, or just alternate modes in general, should always have some sort of unique hook, a deliberate design, and a completely different way it utilizes Smash's core gameplay, providing an experience you can't get elsewhere in the game game and thus is worth revisiting. Smash 4 doesn't do that for the most part. I once said this game has a lot of options, but nothing to do. And everything I've said so far is most of the reason for that. The problems with these modes lead them to not only be indistinguishable from each other, but indistinguishable from standard multiplayer battles. I might as well just be playing against CPUs in versus mode. So what's the point? All of that is especially an issue because, other than those offerings, Smash 4 does not have a core single player experience. I've talked about this multiple times already, but there is no adventure mode in this entry because Sakurai was upset about the subspace emissaries cutscenes being uploaded to the internet. That's really dumb and petty no matter how you slice it, but it's especially silly when you consider that adventure mode doesn't have to be a story mode. If the cutscenes are the main issue, if you think that it's not worth making a billion of them because they're just going to be uploaded and watched online, then create a version of the mode that doesn't focus on that, which had been done before and would be done again later. I know there's a pretty vocal portion of the Smash fanbase that does just want a subspace too, but for me and many any other players, the important thing is just having stuff to do outside of bog standard battling. A unique and compelling single player offering that gives us something to work towards, is substantial or replayable or both, and maybe even lets us explore the worlds of Smash in a way that isn't possible anywhere else. That's the sort of thing that can give an entry in the series a distinct identity and provide players with a real reason to revisit that game in particular. I can point out how the other Smash games succeed in that regard, but not Smash 4. But of course, none of the modes I've brought up so far were really supposed to replace Adventure Mode. Target Blast wasn't meant to define the game. Shocking, I know. That's where we get the Wii U's Smash Tour and the 3DS's Smash Run. Direct replacements for Adventure Mode, but only because they're featured prominently on the main menu and are also green. Yeah, I never understood why they were sold this way. They're not even single player, they're both multiplayer party modes. Though, you've heard this all before if you've seen my video all about Smash Tour. That's also the reason why I won't get into the weeds of that mode here. 
But just to sum up my thoughts, this is the worst Smash Brothers mode ever. It's a visually ugly and mechanically messy board game that clearly takes cues from Mario Party while changing a bunch of things that work there in a desperate attempt to be different, which just ends up making for a less enjoyable game. It's bad on its own, and it's made worse by the fact that it's supposed to be compensation for taking away adventure mode. If you want to hear about these opinions of mine in more detail, check out my video aptly titled The Worst Smash Brothers Mode Ever. Well, I've talked about Smash Tour in depth before, but not the 3DS's equivalent. What about Smash Run? This is so much better than Smash Tour. Really, Smash Run is a pretty damn cool mode. Its concept is heavily inspired by the City Trial mode in Kirby Air Ride. In the first phase, four players are dropped into an expansive labyrinth and are given five minutes to explore the area, defeat enemies from various series, and complete some challenges in order to collect as many stat buffs as possible. When the timer runs out, a final battle ensues, and those power-ups are carried over, which can predictably make for some absolutely ridiculous results. Oftentimes, Sometimes this final battle is, well, some type of battle between all players. But there's also horizontal and vertical races, as well as multi-man contests featuring either the fighting me team or the enemies from the labyrinth where you're competing against the other players for the highest score. This concept is awesome, and I think it's executed fairly well here, especially compared to the rest of Smash 4. I'm generally in love with any form of exploration in video games, so I do get a kick out of investigating every nook and cranny of the labyrinth, but I think what really steals the show here is the lineup of enemies. Baddies from Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, Kid Icarus, and more. Not only is tearing through them a reliable source of dopamine, but so many of them have unique behaviors that become especially interesting when you're facing larger combinations or encounter a special event. All of the cool stuff that Smash Run offers make for the exact thing I've been harping on about, a distinct experience that you can't get elsewhere in the game or even the rest of the series. That being said though, I still feel that there's a handful of glaring flaws keeping Smash Run from truly being the defining feature or saving grace of Smash 4. First, it only has this one map during the exploration phase. That mostly works because there's a pretty wide variety of enemy and loot spawns, random events and the like, so it's not as if you're getting the same thing every time. But still, my aforementioned exploration-fueled lizard brain wants more. A slightly bigger issue is that, even though everyone is technically exploring the same labyrinth at the same time, each player has their own client-side version of that level and can't see or interact with the other players. That's a real shame because players being able to mess with or maybe even help each other during that first phase would potentially lend itself to more of the player-driven chaos one would expect from a multiplayer mode. A much bigger issue is that you can't play Smash Run online. Yeah, that's a pretty big problem because it's a multiplayer mode in a game that heavily emphasizes online play. And because this is the 3DS version of Smash 4, it can be really difficult difficult to get local multiplayer going. It's not just as simple as sitting around the TV and handing out controllers. Each player needs their own 3DS and their own version of the game, and good luck reliably pulling that off at the odd gathering. Online compatibility would greatly alleviate that problem, but because that wasn't available, I didn't really get to play Smash Run with other human players that much, and I'm sure I'm not alone on that one. Every single one of those problems seemed to be products of the hardware. The system couldn't handle multiple giant maps, it couldn't handle multiple players loaded into the same labyrinth, and it couldn't handle an online version of the mode. There are other issues with Smash Run, like not being able to customize the time limit, or the prevalence of plain Jane final battles as opposed to the far more interesting options like the races, but the 3DS's limitations clearly make for the mode's greatest setbacks. So by far the best thing Smash 4 has going for it. It's most unique, compelling, well-designed feature. The one mode across either version of the game that has a distinct identity, and thus gives a good reason to come back to this entry in particular, is held back by being on this.
Though, let's be honest, even if Smash Run had been on the Wii U and was able to reach its full potential, it still wouldn't be a replacement for Adventure Mode. It has gameplay elements from the previous two adventures, but it's still a relatively short multiplayer party mode as opposed to a single player time sink. When I say that Smash 4 is the worst entry in the series, I'm not saying it's a bad game or even that it fundamentally gets Smash Brothers wrong. What I am saying is that between its lackluster stages, its derivative and messy aesthetic, its ho-hum collectibles, and most importantly, its criminally underwhelming array of modes, Smash 4 feels surprisingly devoid of content, lacks an identity of its own, and gives little reason to boot it up nowadays compared to any other entry in the series. It's such a shame to say that too, because again, Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U was such an important game for me. It may just be the Smash game that had the greatest influence on me, but looking back at it, it's such an empty experience compared to the other entries. And I didn't even go through all the reasons for that. <gasps> After getting used to Ultimate's core gameplay, Smash 4 feels so sluggish. Like they were aiming for what Ultimate is, but didn't go far enough. Look at how slow that knockback is. My god! Online is better than brawls, but that's the lowest of bars. For fun is a mess. Four players plus items and stage hazards leads to lag central. And for glory only lets you play with two stocks and only on Omega forms, aka Final Destination. Yeah, I know. Haha, <laughs> funny fox meme. But really, FD is one of the least balanced legal stages. Believe it or not, a platform fighter is typically designed around having, you know, platforms. I know Ultimates Online has its own laundry list of issues, but at least it isn't this damn limiting. This is the worst opening movie in the series. The CGI clips have clashing art styles. There's hardly any actual cinematography in the gameplay footage, and the whole thing is barely synced with the music. These titles suck, but at least just being called 4 3DS and for Wii U fits Smash 4's lack of identity. The game's on the Wii U. And then there's bay o -net. Ta. Yes, the character's so broken she ruined the game. If you were there, you know what it was like. It was hell. Not just because of how overpowered Bayonetta herself was, but because of the terrible effect she had on the community. The only reason she didn't end up being far more damaging to the competitive scene than, say, Meta Knight was to Brawl, is that the game was replaced so quickly. I mean, need I remind you of EVO 2018? This is the image of an entire community, players, spectators, and everyone else severely jaded by the poison rotting their game from the inside out. <sighs> what a sad display. But luckily, controversy would never befall those two players ever again.